I want to talk about Yamanaka factors. I found this part of your book super interesting. And Yamanaka factors is something that I have come across before when reading papers. I've heard people speak about it, but I really didn't fully appreciate what they were until I'd read that part of your books um, that was, I guess, focused on cellular reprogramming and stem cell exhaustion. So um, what are Yamanaka factors and, and what is cellular reprogramming? This is properly fascinating stuff. And I think this is one of the most exciting, but also one of the most sort of speculative and bizarre parts of aging biology at the moment. So we have to rewind back to uh, 2007 when a scientist called Yamanaka, as you'd expect from the name of the factors, um, he, he and his lab were messing around trying to understand what makes something called a pluripotent stem cell. So a pluripotent cell is a cell that can divide into any kind of other cell. And if you think, you know, right back to the very beginning of our lives, of everybody listening to this as lives, obviously, you know, we started out as single cells. We started out as a, a fusion of an egg and a sperm from our mum and our dad. And that first cell, those first cells in the very earliest part of the developing fetus were what are called pluripotent. So these are cells that then go on to, you know, our liver, our bones, our brains, our eyes, our muscles, every part of your body started out as this one kind of cell, but they're able to turn into anything at all. And so for obvious reasons, that is a super exciting, you know, cell to find biologically speaking. And so we know that you can find them in very early embryos, um, but how can we make these things in the lab? Is there any way that we can, you know, come up with a way to make more of these to do experiments on them and so what yamanaka was trying to do is come up with an understanding of what makes a cell pluripotent and so they identified a bunch of genes that are expressed in these uh, in these pluripotent stem cells and they were trying to work out can we make a normal cell so you know adult skin cell or an adult liver cell or whatever it might be into one of these pluripotent cells and they tried this huge number of different combinations and it's important to emphasize like in the 2000s gene editing was not as advanced as it was now this is an absolutely epic feat to try a bunch of combinations of 24 genes but they eventually did manage it and they narrowed it down to just four genes which are these the so-called yamanaka factors and if you add an extra copy of these genes into a cell it seems to run the clock backwards effectively you can take an adult skin cell and it'll go back and back and back and back and turn into one of these pluripotent stem cells which is this absolutely incredible discovery, won him a Nobel Prize a couple of years later. Really super exciting. And I think a lot of people were excited about this for the sort of stem cell implications. So the, the um, therapeutic dream of this was that you could, you know, say, say you had a problem with your liver, you know, a scientist could take one of your stem, uh, sorry, one of your skin cells, differentiate it back into a pluripotent stem cell, and then do the same process, but in reverse and turn it into a liver cell for you. So you know, take a skin cell, turn it into a liver cell, and we could use that to create, you know, perhaps a, a transplanted liver, but one that was perfectly matched to your cells, to your DNA. There'll be no risk of immune rejection and so on. But also from a scientific point of view, just super exciting to be able to experiment with these cells. Now, all that is already incredibly cool but what was then thought was that you know what, what's going on in in this resetting process in the resetting to pluripotency and what does that have to do with the aging process because this is, there's another remarkable thing you know another sort of proof in principle that aging is reversible is that all of us you know if we have kids those kids are born at age zero they're born biologically young and i know that sounds trivial but it is worth thinking about you know it doesn't matter how old the mum or the dad is obviously you can have more difficulties conceiving and there's, there are risks of genetic problems and stuff if, you know, either parent is particularly old. But if you got, you know, a 30 year old mum, a 30 year old dad, 35 year old mum, a 35 year old dad, they have kids that have the same life expectancy as a 16 year old mum and dad do. And so clearly there's some kind of way that our biology has to reset us back to age equals zero. And so scientists started messing around with these Yamanaka factors, trying to work out what was happening to the biological age of these cells, as well as this ability to turn into any kind of cell that they wanted. And what they found was that by resetting these cells to a pluripotent state, they also reverse their biological age back to zero as well. And it's an incredibly exciting result. And there's just no reason to necessarily expect those two things to be connected. Because what you can sort of turn into is one category of fact about a cell. So, you know, some cells have the ability to turn into multiple types of cells, some don't. And there's also biological age, which could be an entirely separate thing. But it's hugely, hugely fortunate that it seems that those two things are connected. So fast forward to the 2010s, people are starting to put these genes into mice and see what happens. And the problem is that if you put these genes into mice and just leave them on all the time effectively, it's very, very bad news for the mice. And the reason is that if, uh, say you've got a pluripotent cell in your body, it's incredibly powerful in the sense that it can turn into any kind of cell, but it is a hopeless liver cell or lung cell or muscle cell. It's not doing the things that those cells are supposed to do. And therefore, you're going to get, you know, if you start inducing this pluripotency throughout the body, you're going to get massive organ failure. So it's really, really bad news to turn these things on all the time. 
However, an experiment a few years later tried, um, they, they, they coupled the genes. So they had this, these OKS, uh, OKSM genes, the Yamanaka factors. They coupled them to uh, something that meant they were only actually turned on when a particular drug was given to the mice. And that means that you can give the drug all the time and have the genes on all the time, or you can only give the drug occasionally and have the genes on temporarily. And so they effectively gave the mice this drug at weekends. So it was it was two days out of every seven. They had two days on, five days off. And what they found was they actually did this in mice that age more rapidly than normal mice. They have a genetic problem so that they age more quickly. And they found that by giving um, these Yamanaka factors transiently rather than on all the time, they did seem to be able to improve the mouse health. And what's really incredible is we've then taken you know cells out of t- t- taking just cells in a dish, and you look at when you induce these Yamanaka factors, it seems that the de-aging part of the process, so the part where the biological clock is turned back, actually happens before the part of the process where the cell becomes pluripotent and able to turn into any kind of cell. And that is just so lucky, because again, we wouldn't expect these processes necessarily to be connected at all. We certainly wouldn't necessarily expect the de-aging bit to happen first. But that is so fortunate, because if the pluripotency bit happened first, you wouldn't get any age reversal, you'd just get dead mice. But in this case, you can turn it on, you can reverse the aging of the mice a little bit, and you can stop it before the cells start to change their state into something that means they're not doing their jobs. This is an incredible result, right? And so now we've got actually more experiments. Um, we've got uh, we, we've shown that you can actually extend the lifespan of normal mice a little bit by giving them these Yamanaka factors. Um, there are these incredible results. Um, in fact, one came out this morning that you sent me before we started chatting, where they managed to use these Yamanaka factors induced transiently to uh, improve the vision of monkeys that have been given an injury in the back of their eye. And by turning on these Yamanaka factors, you can reverse the cells back. And it's worth thinking about why this particular um, this particular idea works. It's because if you, if you were to injure um, you know, an embryo or a fetus in the womb, then what happens is that wound can heal perfectly with no scar because the cells are still in this very plastic state. They're still able to you know, become any kind of cell that they want. Whereas if you do that same injury, and particularly the optic nerve, which is where they do this injury in the experiments, that's something that as an adult, you basically can't regenerate. You know, if you, if you get damaged your optic, optic nerve, that damage is permanent. But by turning the clock back in these cells, they probably made them a bit more plastic and made them able to do that healing process. So that's an incredibly exciting result. Um, the real challenge is that this... Um, this study in the monkeys, this, there was a previous study in mice that showed very much the same thing. It's done with these um, additional copies of the gene that are inducible with the drug. And so the idea is that you give them the drug and this extra gene that's in their DNA that wouldn't normally be there is then able to turn on the Yamanaka factors and start the process. And what I often say when talking about this um, as an idea for a therapy is it feels like a piece of technology that's fallen through a wormhole from the future. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's it's a super powerful, it's effectively like a cheat code for our biology, right? You can just induce these four genes and you can turn back the clock, which is absolutely incredible. The real question is, can we, with our puny 2020s biotechnology, turn this into something that we can actually produce as, you know, some kind of intervention for human beings? Can we, you know, come up with a gene therapy that does this? Can we come up with some kind of drug or combination of drugs that's able to turn on these factors in the right places in the body to come up with some kind of biological rejuvenation? And the good news is, because this is so exciting, because this is so hot, I think there might even be enough investment to find out. So the really big news, uh, I think, last year was that Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, and a bunch of other extremely rich dudes had put together a huge amount of money, $3 billion, to create a startup called Altos Labs with the mission of working out whether this was possible. I think it's a bit weird to call it a startup when it's got quite that much funding. But I think that probably is enough money to have a really serious crack at turning this, you know, hugely exciting prospect into something that might work as a therapy. But the question is, you know, can we do it? And I'm really excited to find out because the potential is absolutely enormous. Mm-hmm.